Okay, in this one we're gonna see how you can manipulate wildcards in C with the fnmatch function and the globe function. So fnmatch is to match uh, wildcard patterns on strings and the globe function will match those patterns but it will actually look in your file system and see which file match on them. So let's start on the fnmatch function for which, for which I have pre-prepared -pre an example. So as you can see, the fnmatch function takes as a first parameter the actual pattern uh, to use. And in the second uh, argument, it takes the string to match the pattern on. And the third argument is just some flags that I will detail later. later. The result of the function is zero if it's a match, otherwise it's uh, fn no match if there is no match. So here I have the string hello world, and I say uh, I want a he, then any character, uh, any number of times, and then wo, and then any characters, any number of time. Uh, uh, you should be familiar with wildcard, I assume. And so if I run this, you can see there is a match. If, uh, for for example, I remove this one, and uh, uh, it's it expects a hello, uh, you can see there is a no match as you would expect. Uh, so yeah, the, the star character is the one that everybody knows, but you also have other ones. You have uh, a few other ones, at least in the POSIX uh, specification, which is the one that your shell uses, for example, and uh, many other utilities. You have the question mark one. So for example, let's put, put a bunch of those and then uh, world and exclamation point. And the behavior of the question mark is the same as the star, except it only matches for one character, not like any number of characters. Uh, so in this case, it will match. So it will say, I want three of any character at, at this place. You can see that it matches. If you uh, remove one, it expects two characters uh, that can be anything than a, a comma. Then it won't match because there is a, there is actually three here. Um, still in the syntax of the pattern uh, pattern matching uh, string, you can have character uh, classes. Uh, forgot how it's called, but uh, you can look at the documentation in man seven glob. So there is uh, character classes indeed. So what you can have is uh, very similar to regular expression, you can have like any number of characters here. Uh, for example, in this case, it uh, expects uh, hey, then uh, any letter from A, B, C to L, and then L, O. So in this case, it will match. Uh, if I save the file, yeah, you can see there is a match. If I replace this by uh, an A, it will still match, match because it is in the character class. Uh, but if I replace this by, with some other character, it won't match. You can have also very similar still to regular expressions. Here we can have a, a character range. So from A to from A to Z would capture every single letter, letter between A and Z. So uh, if I put like some uh, a B there, for example, it will match. But if I put again some character that isn't uh, uh, between A and Z, it won't match. And there is also uh, like I don't know, like character class, but uh, that are like somewhat predefined. So you can have uh, two dots, alpha, two dots. And so that will be all the alpha characters on your system. So all the all the letters, uppercase or lowercase. Uh, so in this case, if I put like uh, an uppercase A, uh, it doesn't match. If I, but if I put, uh, it does match. So, okay, never mind. Not the not the per case one apparently. Again, uh, I haven't used this recently, but we can look at it in the documentation. Where here you have all the all the character classes that you want. to so there is lower, upper, uh, alpha, blank. If you want to match on space and uh, tabs and so on. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, all there is to the POSIX standard uh, pattern matching. Uh, next, we're gonna see the FN match flags. Uh, so there is only only a three of them that are uh, relevant or that I've used in the past. So there is uh, the first one, which is very simple. It's uh, called uh, uh, 
uh, FNM no escape. Uh, because by default, if you have an escape character, uh, so if, if we come back to, to this, and then you compile, there is a match because the star is a, a wildcard character, but we can uh, actually escape it with a backslash. And uh, by default, that would mean that it literally expects uh, to have literally a, a, a little star here. So here it would match, but like if you come back to the hello world, it wouldn't, of course. But you can get rid of that behavior where the backslash just becomes a regular uh, character with uh, FNM uh, no escape. Uh, and as you can see, yeah, if I put something like a backslash in this string, it will match because it matches literally the backslash character. Uh, the next two flags are more related to if you want, you want to match a path on your system, which will be uh, again relevant for the glob function later. Um, so for example, let's say I have a path to file uh, here. Uh, and I have a, let's just make it this way for now. And so what you would want to do is uh, something like this. Uh, generally, if you want to match uh, uh, this kind of pattern for a file path, and this would work, yeah. Uh, but it would have a, a behavior that you don't expect is uh, where if you remove the slashes, it would still work because uh, because the slashes are just considered like any character. But of course, if you want to match on path, that's a bit strange. And uh, so you wouldn't want th this behavior. Uh, you would want to that uh, that uh, the slash characters are matched uh, without the wildcards. Uh, and so to do that, you can do FNM. Uh, I think it's path name. And so here you can see that I have no match, but if I add the, the slash characters, I still have a match about what you would expect to match on path. The next one is uh, still to, to match on, on files. Uh, so for example, when you have a, a hidden file like so, uh, you don't really want it to, to be matched. Uh, again, it's the same thing where you wanted the slash to be matched like exactly a character for a character, not by a wildcard. Here you want the, the dot, the period character to be matched uh, with a period, not with a wildcard. So in our example, it would be caught uh, by the question mark one, but that's not really something you want. You, you would rather have it uh, match only when you have a literal dot. Uh, and so you can do uh, use the other flag called uh, period, FNM period. And in this case, it, there will be no match. But if you replace the question mark by literal dot, there will be a match. So yeah, that's about it for the FN match function. Now we will uh, check out the, the glob. Uh, so glob is a bit more complex, but basically all it does is like run through every single file in the current directory. And then uh, if it needs to recursively go into each directory and match the pattern that you specified on the, on those files and return a list of all the files that matches. The glob function is exactly what you have when you type in your terminal, like uh, a glob here. For example, I have uh, maybe I should use something else. Can do this on all the C file or I have uh, some dir with some C file in it, uh, like so. So exactly the same behavior, just in uh, programming instead of uh, your shell, uh, in C instead of your shell, I mean. So just for a bit of context, here is uh, the tree structure where I have a, a bunch of random C files that don't do anything. Then I have uh, some directory with again C and uh, a header file. And then I have uh, another no permission dir that has uh, some file in it, but we don't have access to it. And I also have a hidden file in uh, some directory. So let's do a basic example of the glob function. Take, take, take. So you first need to declare a struct to store the result of your uh, glob match, which is uh, of type uh, glob t. Uh, then you will. Uh, Called the, the glob function, uh, you will first need to import uh, to include the glob.h uh, 
header file of course, same thing for fnmatch, fnmatch.h. Next, you will specify your pattern. So in this case, in this basic example, I just want to match on all the files that end with .c. Next, you will have, uh, again, uh, some flags that I will detail later. This one, uh, the third one, set to null for now. I will, again, detail later what it is. And as a last argument, you pass a pointer to your struct that will store the, all the file names that match. And the glob function will dynamically allocate this list of uh, file names. So, of course, at the end, when you're done using it, you need to call uh, glob3 on it, which will, well, free the allocated memory. And here, after I uh, get the matches with glob, I just print them one by one, and uh, that's pretty much it. As you can see, the pglob, uh, or uh, like the glob t struct, just uh, is in the same format that the arguments that you get from your main. So it has a gl pass c to count the number of paths that are allocated or that are matched. And then there is a gl underscore pass v to uh, where the actual strings uh, of the string uh, of the path that matched uh, are stored. So let's quickly run this. Uh, yeah, and you can see that for my wildcard everything.c, it returns the correct file name. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, about it for the basic behavior of glob. Now let's check out some uh, some flag that can be useful. So for example, if I list uh, every file in the current directory, you can see that I have uh, some perm dir and some dir. Uh, it could be useful. For example, I know uh, for a lot of shell do this to have the the directories uh, suffixed with a slash, and so you can use glob the glob mark flag to make it so that the directories are prefixed with a slash. Uh, there is a one called glob um, error, where the default behavior of, uh, of glob is, uh, for example, for the no perm dir, it encountered an error when you try to go into it, or if you do uh, like a wildcard that would go into it, it would encounter an error, but it wouldn't stop the trying to find more path. Uh, so I could actually uh, demonstrate this. So you see that uh, it probably encountered an error here, but it just went on with his life. But you could have uh, the glob uh, error uh, thing that would make it stop before it. Uh, so here it entered or it tried to enter the no perm directory, failed, and so it didn't even bother going further. Um, next, you have. Uh, one that is probably useful only if you re rewrite a shell. So if you have something impossible, uh, let's say this, that doesn't match anything. And uh, by default, if you have no flags, it doesn't do anything. But that's not the behavior of a shell. Like if you do uh, the same thing here, uh, a wildcard in your shell. Okay, if you have like a regular shell, this, it won't, it just won't expand the wildcard. And so for this, you have you have the the glob no check flag, which will just uh, boom, 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 which will just return the pattern itself as the first path that matched. Again, probably only useful if you're doing some shell stuff. Then there is someone very similar to the fn match one, which is no escape. Uh, it's exactly the same behavior. The backslash is treated as a regular backslash instead of a, an escaping character. There is the glob no sort. Okay, so by default, uh, if I go back to my example of uh, just every single file in the current directory, you can see that it's sorted. So it goes from A, B, and then the rest are sorted by uh, lexical order. But uh, of course, if you want to save a bit of performance and you don't care uh, about them being sorted, you can just do glob no sort. And it will uh, just leave them at the, as the order where it can encountered every single file or directory, which can save a bit of performance. OK, the next one is interesting as well, is uh, if you have different patterns you want to match on, but you want them in a single list at the end, you can use the 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 glob append flag. So you can see here, I first match all the file.c in the current directory. Then I want to 
add to this list of match uh, all the C files that are in some directory. And here, so here I have no flags for the first call, but then for the second call, I reuse the, the same pglob struct, but I add the glob happen flag, which will in the end create, a, create an array of all the matches from the two calls, not just one of them. And you can only, and you can uh, like free both of the values of the calls uh, with only one glob free. Yep. Let's run this, and you can see that it matched all the C file in the current one, but also the C file that was in some directory. Uh, next, I, I should uh, quickly, so that's about it for the flags. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, next, I, I should probably just specify quickly the, like the return value of globe, so you have a result, and uh, this result can be um, it's zero if you have a match, it's a uh, globe no match if you well, don't have a match, and there is two cases where you should probably uh, kill the program or handle it uh, uh, like uh, something more important, which is a uh, globe uh, abort, uh, which is when it encounters an error and, uh, on a file or something and you told it to quit. Or there is the more important one, uh, globe no space, where uh, a call to malloc or realloc failed. So you should uh, probably uh, handle those uh, more cleanly than, than I was uh, uh, in your use of the globe function. Uh, and lastly, there is uh, this parameter that I have uh, set not to worry about for now, which uh, I was set to null. Uh, this is actually an error function, so you can uh, specify like a hook. So whenever globe encountered a file, a, a directory that it, it cannot go into for permi permission, uh, permissions, reason, or something else, you can specify a function to call with that pass name and the error code it got, and uh, yeah, just define the behavior, uh, what to do in those cases. So an error function has this signature where it returns an integer, uh, it takes as a first argument uh, the path on which it failed, and then the, the Erno uh, code of, uh, that, that happened when, uh, when Glob tried to read this directory. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to print the path and the error and return zero. If you return zero, the Glob function is going to continue, so it's going to consider that you handled the error correctly and uh, you know what you're doing. Otherwise, you can also specify like uh, something else than zero, and then it will uh, just stop there and uh, return the matches that it already has. And to do this, let's uh, let's go in the let's try to go in the no perm directory and list everything. And here, instead of null, we specify the error function. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it will go into this function and uh, say that no perm dir and the error code was permission denied. And of course, if you have something that is uh, just like uh, something like this. Uh, okay, what? Well, I have forgotten a new line. But you can see that uh, it still went, since I returned zero here, it still went into the sum, sum dir uh, and found the hello.c. But if I return one, it uh, didn't bother even continuing. So yeah, that's about it for uh, FN match and globe and how you can do wildcard in C. Uh, maybe I don't know. I can just uh, quickly show my uh, my project called uh, Global, in which uh, I just uh, rewrite the the FN match and uh, globe function, which uh, are quite uh, yeah fun to to rewrite if you're looking for an exercise. Um, so for example, the, the fn match is a recursive function, which is quite interesting, where you just uh, need to yeah, recursively call your fn match according to which wildcard you're, uh, you're on and advance slowly in the pattern or the string, uh, stuff like this. Uh, and, uh, and the globe is also, uh, yeah, as well, uh, quite fun where you need to recurse into directories and uh, make sure to allocate properly the, or uh, reallocate the, the path thing uh, smartly and, uh, and so on and so on. So, uh, so yeah, I will put that one in the description as well. And, 
And yeah, that's uh, that's about it for uh, Globe and FN match. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will see you uh, in the next one.